Yeah, that's good. Here we go. We're recording. Yeah, we won't do so much chit chatting anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All together, <Make> business. <laughs> and uh, and welcome everyone, Jai Guru. Hello, hello, Jai Guru. So first, the two questions that we did get on the uh, from the website, which I was just going to read those um, first, I guess. It says, hello, I've been watching your talks almost since you began every week without fail. I find it very useful. My question, though I'm the formless self presence, still as that have somehow created all of this as a universe, which though it may be dreamlike is still very realistic. So how can I ignore it as mere illusion? So I realize it is me, the self, but then the question arises, well, what am I? I am a creator of worlds, it would seem. If I sit with myself, I do pass into nothingness simply by not concentrating on a world. But then I come back into consciousness and ask again, what exactly am I? Am I just an illusory concern? I think my question is something like that. Be interested to hear what you say about that. And this is, um, if you're remaining with your selfless self, these sort of things like who am I or what am I, these are not going to come. Because as you remain with your selfless self, that deep, 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 like you said already, you've experienced the nothingness. Well, that that's experiencing the nothingness is all there is. And even the nothingness, since it's an experience, is something that's been added on to presence, so to speak, the experience of nothingness. Because when you remain with your selfless self, all of this is appearing on your spontaneous presence. So now you've said, you know, you and the world are one and the same. So there's no identification. Anything that you can identify, you're not. You're not that. You can't be anything that's perceivable because you are that perceiver perceiving. So you're saying that you can see a world, you can see that maybe you're a creator of worlds. And even that creation of world is not a deliberate act because think about when you're laying down to sleep and there's nothing. And then suddenly this feeling I exist stirs and creates the dream world but you're not actually creating the dream world in that you're doing something. It's a spontaneous creation. And, and you're basically, I guess you could say the formless observer in your dream, although you may take a form within the dream to see the creation, but there's no creator. It's a spontaneous activity. Okay. And I would say, for that, just like I don't need to know what I am because there's nothing other than myself. Am I? Am, am I what? I, I can't be anything because I'm nothing. And you say you you understand you are nothing. So if you are not nothing, no thing, then you cannot be a thing. So all of these things are occurring within that nothing that you are. So that's why Maharaj says, if at all you want to compare, compare yourself to sky or space. So you could say, if I have to know who I am, this I that's speaking is space. And in reality, as Maharaj says, it's more subtle than space because you can perceive space. Okay. Question to be read at next Tuesday talk. Okay. This is, uh, thank you for your website and all your videos on Maharaj. Every week I look forward to your videos on YouTube. Um, fortunately, the subtitles and the translation are a great help to me. 
I have a question about the practice of meditation. I recite a mantra throughout the day, and I meditate every day by reciting the mantra on breathing. At first, I keep my eyes fixed on the tip of the nose, not anymore, as Maharaj teaches. Yes, that's just to give the mind something to do. Uh, should I simply pay attention to the mantra that I recite mentally on the breath, staying focused there without going beyond it? Or should I, while reciting the mantra on breathing, concentrate on the I and follow it more and more deeply as I turn my attention to it, trying to grasp it without ever getting there, following it in its escape ahead, always reciting the mantra? Or three... Or should I, while reciting the mantra, always during meditation, identify, as Maharaj says, to the space beyond me, outside of me? What is the best way to go deeper and deeper into the selfless self? Sorry for this practical beginner question. Best way to go deeper and deeper into the selfless self through mantra meditation. The mantra is running naturally. And so... Mantra is a 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week thing. When the mantra is being recited, it's basically keeping the mind busy. And Maharaj uses the example of the mother who's baking. She needs to bake dinner, but the children are all running around doing stuff. So what does she do? She gives the children some toys so she can concentrate on the baking. And that's the main thing. See, this is not a deliberate, like, how do I do mantra, or where is mantra, or anything like this. As a matter of fact, Maharaj, at least when I received mantra in my own experience, he didn't give a lot of instruction as to mantra, except he said, breathe in and breathe out. And this is the mantra. And so then it was just concentration. And the mantra is to sweep away the illusory layers, the illusory thoughts that are covering your presence. But it shouldn't be like a, uh, like a mechanical type, you know, how does this or do point A or do B. It's not like you're putting together an Ikea, uh, you know, thing where it says first do slot A and then slot B or anything like this. The mantra is basically... In your everyday walk, you try to remain with your selfless self. When you're sitting in meditation, mantra's there. And it just goes deeper and deeper naturally because you're inviting the attention of the invisible listener. By erasing the illusory thoughts, the attention is no longer carrying away with illusory thinking. And then the thought of who's thinking and why am I thinking these thoughts? Instead, you're remaining with your selfless self, slowly, silently, and permanently. As Maharaj says, it's the antivirus software. It's removing all the wrong files. The wrong files are, I suddenly know I exist, and from this position, I see a world. And I say, I'm an object in the world of other objects, but this is not true formless presence that's animating all of this. And that's why once you know yourself in a real sense, you absolutely know that everything is your own self, that all, your, all the beings that you are seeing are nothing but your own selfless self. My presence is in every being. This becomes obvious because there are no other beings except this presence. So all of this that we're seeing is arising on the presence that you are. Okay, that's our two little things. I had that experience today. I was um, dealing with some wedding emergencies and, you know, like kind of like um, getting kind of impatient, you may say. And um, so I took a break and I just started doing some yoga in my room. And I, you know, I was listening to my recordings. You know, I did a lot of recordings over the years, and I was listening to Siddha Rameshwara. Um, and he, you know, he, when he said everything is Brahman, it just kind of like hit me that all of this is simply that. <laughs> so what am I getting bent out of shape for? <laughs> just 
<laughs> it was just really very liberating in that moment, just to, oh, wow, well, you know, this is it. This is, everything is, as Ranjit would say, everything is he, you know, everything is Brahman and everything is selfless self, um, you know, so. Exactly. That's, and, and Maharaj says the whole concept of the spirituality is just to know yourself in a real sense. Now you know yourself in a real sense, just die, just die, very, very subtle sense of presence that has been labeled Brahman, Atman, Paramatman, God, Master. Oh, so that I, I am that. Well, if that is all there is, then as you just said, all of this is that. And this body that I'm using is part of all there is as that. When I say I, it's not John. I is that presence, which is all of everything. You know, it's, it's the uh, I is presence. I is the totality. I is consciousness. Now you say, okay, what happens when John dies? Well, John's not I. John's a form that I is speaking through and that is perceiving this world of the five elements that are doing their thing. But John is not I. I am not I. I is all of everything. I is formlessness. And that's why Maharaj always says, be a humble I. It's not egoistic I, because ego is what? Ego is individuality. John, John's life. John's life is more important than Rami's life. Or John's life is less important than Kathleen's life. But no, that's ego. Because ego is separation where there is no separation. I is everything. I is presence. I is Kathleen, Rami, and John, and Andrew, and Keith, and Trish, and Elizabeth. I is everything. Not as an individual. I does not die. I cannot die because I was never born. Nisargadatta Maharaj, I am that. Well, I, I is that. Pretending to be John doesn't make it so. And formless without the concept of formless. I think that's a, because we can say, oh, formless like this. But no, formless is like no attributes. So any attribute that you're ascribing to formlessness is an add-on, which can be erased through mantra. Or it can be erased through remaining with your selfless self and knowing, oh, this attribute that I'm attaching to my own self is not true. can seem there's always some kind of bias going on and I always tend to think of it as, as my bias but there is no I guess that's the point there is no uh, my my well there's the concept of my which just needs to be erased because that's a false concept so there's not even any bias or just feels like it. Yeah, because bias even changes. It's not something that's that's a permanent thing. Yeah, There's right. nothing that yeah. is permanent, even in the body. When you say my body, 
body is always changing. Which body are you speaking of? Are you speaking of the body when you were a little boy, when you were a young man, when you're an old man, or when you're a really old man? Which body is my body? And which bias is your present bias? <laughs> exactly. So all these things are they're just conceptual. And the first concept is I exist. Because that's a bias. That creates duality. I exist. The one that knows existence exists because is this, the sense of existence has appeared to that that you are without the knowledge of your own existence. And your knowledge of your own existence comes through the concept of separation and duality. I exist. And now I think I exist as this body. And I see mom and dad and they tell me, you're John. I say, oh, I am John. But I, I change his form. So you could say as the forms are created and destroyed, I is John, I is Rami, I is, now it sounds like I have poor English, but I is Kathleen, I is Andrew, I is Trish and Keith, and I is Elizabeth, and I is the entire world. That sounds really bad English. I is everything. <laughs> that, is, that is Caesar's English. <laughs> <laughs> we'll quote you. <laughs> yeah, I is everything. <laughs> John, I watched uh, uh, Planet of the Apes, you know, in that uh, mm -hmm. Caesar says, Caesar, home. I, Caesar, <laughs> like yeah. that. Huh? <laughs> because I, how can I, number one, I can't speak without a body. I can't say I. That's why Maharaj says, prior, prior to being this, were you John? Were, was there any speech? No. Was there any knowledge? No. All relations, all knowledge, all speech, all words came along with the body. And you're not body. So basically, you can discard everything from the body-based illusion. That's why when we get caught up in words... Well, we gave the meaning to the words. When we came along with the body, we said, oh, this is this, and this is that, or this is this. I think Maharaj uses the example of saying donkey or God. These are words. If you mix up those words, then people get very upset and offended. But we gave the words. And quite frankly, the donkey doesn't know he's donkey. You say, oh, you're a donkey. Oh, okay, yes, yes, okay. No, he's not. there's no sense of I am something. So I is all. That's why if there's tension, then it's it's on the concepts. And Maharaj says, what do we want? We want fearless life, happiness, tension-free life. Well, the concept of duality is creating all the concept of happiness or unhappiness. Prior to beingness, there was no happiness, unhappiness. There was no tension. There was no not tension. There was no peace. All these things came along with the body. You're not an individual. And that's why mantra meditation however you wish to do it it's mostly concentrate on the concentrator and you can sit here just now and begin sort of to allow okay there's attention to this screen but now there's an attention that's seeking the source of attention and releasing the attention of looking at this screen And you're just here. And you can find yourself in any moment, any moment. So when the seeming world seems like it's buzzing, remain with your selfless self. Find yourself in that moment. And it's, how can I be involved in anything that's occurring 
around this body based, you know, because I'm not body, I know this, I'm here, I know that even closing the eyes, I can still see, I see nothing, but they're seeing. So I'm not this body or any of the objects that are going around in it, creating this body based illusion. So why am I going to get involved in it? Maybe it appeared really, really enticing. So I remain with myself and remain with yourself and notice that whatever seemingly was needing your attention, it, it's already dissolved. Oh, what was that? What was happening? I don't know. And yet, just like setting up for this meeting today, signing into the one computer and then signing into this computer, assigning myself host rights, doing the recording, all these things can be going on. You don't have to be there as John is doing this or John is doing that or no, these are just spontaneous actions in the moment. Had it not worked, then it's like, okay, try again. But there's no like, oh, no, you know, because there's no one doing it. It's just spontaneous action. After tonight, we'll see. Will this recording work? It says it's recording. We'll see if it actually records. And we'll send it out like we normally do. Actually, we're not sending it out. I'm sorry about that. We're going to put it on the, on the website where you can just download it from the website on the link. And it'll also be on YouTube. But if it doesn't record, it doesn't record. And there's no thought about it not recording. Some people might write in and, oh, where's the talk? What happened? Well, it didn't work. And if you cry about it not working, then there's a sense of doership. <laughs> and there's an expectation that it's going to work. If I expect it to work, then, you know, Hopefully it works. All is good. It does. It doesn't. But it should be dropped. And if I do start to get upset, as a matter of fact, just yesterday, I did get a little upset because my son was supposed to be going to Sprint to get his phone that he had cracked, get the screen fixed, and he wound up walking away with a brand new phone on my account. And so I wasn't <laughs> looking forward to this. And I did get upset, but then quickly it subsided. And we talked about last week, okay, there was an upset, yes. But then it quickly subsided. Did I take the touch of the world? Yes. Did I take the touch and, 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 and see that, what is this? Like, I ask you to do one thing and you do a total another th different thing and charge me for it. So this is upsetting, but in the moment, and then dropped and quickly returned. Nonetheless, samsara is a trouble for everyone. Prove it again. You did what? Samsara. Samsara, like. Yeah. Family life, kids, <laughs> life, like that. But I never lost myself. I, I never said, oh, and see, this is the key too. I get upset, and we talked about this last week, but it's not that, oh, my spirituality, where did it go, or how, how, no, yeah, I, I know myself in a real sense, but these things are occurring, and just like I saw Maharaj get upset about a, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, a bill for some kind of water thing or something, he and Tata were talking, and this guy had presented a bill, and Maharaj says, no, absolutely not, we're not paying this. <laughs> This is not correct. This is not a correct thing at all. And and he said, you go back and you correct it. But we're not take this is not correct. So it wasn't an upset, but it was definitely, okay, I'm involved in the world. But certainly Maharaj didn't say, oh, I just got involved in worldly things or what. No, because it's, and see, it's spontaneous in the moment. There's no sense of doership. There's no taking the touch of doership, even a little bit upset comes and falls very quickly. It's not a, it's not like what we would say, oh, this, how did this happen? Or then I start to get depressed or, or anything like that. 
or I get vengeful. No, because the truth is, okay, this whole experience happened. And like you said, it's family. This is happening. And, and his mom was even like, you know, your, your dad <laughs> didn't say you could do that. And it's going to be, uh, you know, but it's, it's finished. And uh, you don't lose yourself. Because in the background of every experience, there you are. Like, you don't go anywhere. All experience is appearing on your presence. Where all experience ends, there you are. Same way of saying, in the background of every experience, there you are. All experience appears on your presence. And where all experience ends, there you are. Because you are. No matter what, daytime, nighttime. And that's why Maharaj says, be with you always. Be with you daytime, nighttime, morning time, because you are. And everything that's appearing on your spontaneous presence is just illusion. But you don't lose yourself. Even the concept, I am not that, is just a concept because you are that. And you can discover that for yourself. You can't say, well, I'm becoming more of that now. No, you're not becoming more of that. You're dissolving the illusory concepts that were previously believed in that you're separate from yourself. Because I'm John trying to remain as the selfless self. No, the concept of John is dissolving within the selfless self that you are. And that's why Ramakant Maharaj says about progress. Well, who's progress? The progress is the dissolution of the false. But the false was false. We didn't get an ample time last week to thank you, Kathleen, for having run this whole thing for us for four years every Tuesday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Kathleen. Kathleen. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it wasn't me who did it. Uh, there you go. There you are. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> Selfless self. Couldn't, Isn't it? couldn't help it. Yeah. Well, it looks like everybody made it onto the new platform here, which is good. Mm -hmm. Everybody who normally comes. We always have new people who come. So, see. Jordan isn't here, I guess. Oh, yeah, he doesn't come every time. I He, you know. I, I didn't purposely hide my picture. It just disappeared. I was wondering yeah. that, Trish. We usually yeah, see I you. don't know. I, it, it, and I, 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 my picture is not on there tonight either. Yeah. No, I have no idea. <laughs> well, just, the, the quarter yeah. did say stop video or start video. Yeah, I just said ask to start video. And oh, well, okay, that video. did it. Yeah, there, there you okay. go. Good, good, good. And there Elizabeth, go. I did the same for you as well. And there you oh, are. There you yeah. are. <laughs> <laughs> yep, everybody's here. And Manohar is doing his usual thing. <coughs> yeah.
Everybody's frozen. Huh. Well, in, in a way, if there are no questions, it means nobody is uh, having any trouble. <laughs> oh, well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> We're just not thinking of any questions. That's good. <laughs> 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 uh, every, every question is a doubt about your formlessness because any question is going to be a body-based question you can't have a question about your own self even who am I is a separate uh, kind of a, a dualistic separation of who am I? If I just remain with my selfless self, this question will not arise. Just, just... Uh, Go ahead. Uh, uh, this is not the question. Uh, I wanted to bring this up last week. So, J. Krishnamurti, you know, right? So, he was the he was like projected as the head of the Theosophical Society at the age of 32 or 33. Uh, he dissolved that organization. He said that you know, you know, no uh, organization, nothing would help humanity. So here on what so I don't represent this uh, organization. Then he told one statement like throughout my life. The, if there is one purpose that is to bring humanity out of this suffering. So then, so even though he was, you know, traveling across the world, but his lifestyle was just same. He goes and talk to the people, help them to see how they are conditioned, how can come out of it. So, but, uh, you know, he spent whole life. And, uh, and uh, that is the one thing I would want, I wanted to bring. Uh, that was the same thing, you know, did our uh, Maharaj, you know, uh, the moment we knew about him, his life was similar, you know, similar to you know, the Maharaj. So whatever Maharaj asks you to do, I don't think that uh, there is no much difference what uh, they did, what Maharaj wanted you to do. So, that is the one thing. Other thing, even though, you know, the teachers, they appear different because of the one's conditioning. But, uh, you know, if we see with a little maturity, they are uh, same, you know. Even Jake, I was watching yesterday one video. He was talking about conditioning, like how we make images. Images, like now I'm considering myself as Rami, body, this mind. Now how this image operate in the every moment and how that creates the complex. So, JK says, you know, sir, you see the danger of this image, uh, how this image is operating, how it is causing the problems. Then you come out of it. And he says another thing, the first problem is making these images. Then how could you start making images? Like somebody comes and tell you that you are beautiful or you are a very nice person. John, you are doing good job. Now, our mind comes and oh, it feels it is pleasant or unpleasant and it records it. Now he says here, be alert and see the danger of this image. Like, you know, now I'm thinking if you, maybe you praise me. So maybe because of, if I record this, right, like if, then this becomes my image and I seek that praise again and again and again, that attention. So that is whenever that is being stopped, coming from you or whomever I'm expecting, then I get suffering. So that is the danger. So uh, it's a beautiful, but if I would see little closely here, right? When there is no image operating or uh, I as Rami stopped operating, right? That is the presence, you know, you talk about. 
when i don't talk to her so it's so, just um, and similarly you said like early in nam mantra uh, uh, it cleans the concepts this year you know this image making so as krishna murthy says you know it needs you know lot of attention i don't know like maybe one needs a maturity or sharp intellect to see that this danger all this thing but nam mantra it's like very powerful so it is doing the same job so the, the, if you see little closely whatever the both masters are saying it's one same but maybe the way they are approaching the way they are telling the the symbols they are using it's a bit different so why i am bringing this up is at least personally i have been having a lot of conflict you know what krishnamurti was saying what maharaj is saying what you know maharaj is saying mantra would be the job check is saying altogether different thing there was no maturity but as this talks are going on going on there is some you know inner clarity uh, thanks for that you know if i wouldn't have attended these sessions right i would be fighting with at least two or three people every day in the traffic traffic <laughs> in the, would be suffered with the whatever is happening in the office uh, thank you so much you know i was a bit stranded when maras passed so the one thing that i would say is maharaj never got into the body base things of like how the images of me or and and for my own self in the way that i was brought with maharaj was except your selfless self there's no god no brahman no paramatma no master nothing is there this all these concepts came along with the body but i am not body i was not body and i'm not going to remain body so who am i mantra allows me to know myself in a real sense because it clears away all the illusory thoughts all the illusory thinking all the everything so that there's no concept of something here good job bad job this job that job my 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 primary thing is that maharaj has said do this do this that's it because again to me maharaj is god in the human form and whatever god says that's the duty that's the spiritual duty and uh but i know a lot of and i'm not beating on any like krishna murti i know he's a very famous guy and all this kind of stuff but to entertain a lot of the speaking that came along with the body from myself i don't think that is uh you know it 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 